reference. So before we get started, I would love to have you introduce yourselves and I would love for you to tell me what your goal is for being here today. So Allison, you are at the top of my screen, so I'm gonna ask you first. All right, well, hi everyone, I'm Allison. Robin and I go way back. <laughs> we have been biz besties for a long time. I am a content coach and I'm a podcaster. And I wanted to come here today, not only to see Robin's lovely face, it's been a while since we've chatted, but I want to get her perspective on how to grow without being married to social media, because that is kind of how I've grown my business is being on social media, but I'm getting to the point in my life where I don't want to be on social media as much anymore. So I just want to see if there's some other creative ways. I want to kind of re-examine my brand see how I can really maybe restructure it a bit. And I'm also launching the new name or the new rebranding of my podcast at the end of the month. So I thought this masterclass was perfect timing. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so excited for your rebrand for your podcast. I think it's so exciting. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's been an honor for me to watch you transition and grow as an entrepreneur too over the past several years. So super, super fun. And congratulations on the podcast. Um, Betsy, you are next on my screen. So we'll start with you next. All right. We're going alphabetically seems. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I didn't even think about that. Um, I am Betsy Chrisman and um, I am a recovering pharmaceutical biotech um, professional. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have been in that industry for 30 some odd years. And recently I've been um, doing a lot of um, contract work and it's burning me out. But um, in parallel, I am, I would say relaunching, but it's not really relaunching because it never launched to begin with. So um, I formed a business with some some ideas about where I wanted to go with it and then didn't go anywhere with it. And um, recently I've had some significant life changes and now I have a significant other and we are partnering together to launch um, our business, which is called the journey of we. And so we will be doing um, programs and seminars and workshops all based on positive psychology, include um you know, life coaching, positive psychology based life coaching. And um, so we are at the ground floor of putting this together. And I loathe social media. So I am here to I don't want any part of it. And when I hear you have to do this, and you have to do that, and you have to do this other thing, I just I, it stops me in my tracks because I don't want to do that. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel organic or authentic. And so there, I'm convinced there must be a way to be successful without, you know, getting into that rat race. And I'm sorry if I insult anyone, but <laughs> I'm being very open, honest, and authentic here because this is how I feel. So that's I think me. Betsy, I think a lot of people have a love-hate relationship, but you said something that I think is very key. Society tells us we have to do this. And I know Allison and I both fell into this trap and I was on there all the time, but I wasn't fulfilled and I was frustrated and I was spending more time in doubt and comparison than I was being productive. And it was altering my beliefs. And if it alters your beliefs, you can't move forward. So we're going to talk so much about this today. It's going to be, it's going to be fun because you're on the same page. Um, <laughs> Ravina, will you introduce yourself, please, and tell us your goals for being here? Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Ravina, and I'm actually a, a bookkeeper. So okay. um, I'm kind of um, an independent remote bookkeeper. Um, I, I retrained over COVID. Uh, my previous life, I was a preschool teacher. So um, kind of just something new. I just um, whenever there's an, an opportunity to learn something new, to kind of attend something, I just kind of try and absorb as much information as I can and see what I can um, sort of use um, in my business. Um, so trying to figure out what I want it to look like. It's beginning to take more shape. Um, so it just felt like um, you, you came into, popped into my inbox. And I was like, okay, fine. Let's just see where this, uh, where this goes. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I guess it's all about the timing, right? When you see things and, and whether or not they resonate. So welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, do you use social media, Ravina? 
Um, I just have a website. Um, okay. I'm not sure, I guess maybe in terms of like for bookkeeping, I, I, I can't even think about how I would take social media and sort of use it because it just doesn't seem, I don't know, I, I, maybe I haven't been able to make that connection between the two. So maybe okay. this would be kind of help me understand like what what's what I'm missing or what I'm not even seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, we have one more person joining us. So, um, hello, Majet. Let's see. Hi, Majet. We are doing introductions. I would love for you, we're just rounding out the introduction. So I would love for you to introduce yourself. And then if you would tell us the goal for why you're attending today. Let's see. Majet, are you there? <laughs> This is always so awkward on Zoom, right? Like, you just don't know. <laughs> hey, sorry, I'm driving. Um, I'm oh, listening okay. in. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Do you do you want to introduce yourself, Majet, or do you want to just forego that since you're driving? All right, you guys, we're just going to start because, oh, wait, here she is. No, we're going to let her drive. I don't want an accident to happen. That would be awful. So we're going to just dive in. And if more people come in, you'll just have to excuse me for a second as I let them let them in um, since I'm solo today. But I am going to start since I already did. We already did introductions. I'm just going to jump into what I think, what I believe the number one thing that keeps people stuck or holds them back from going to that next level of success in their business. And that thing, if we can get a drum roll maybe, is belief. And I kind of alluded to this earlier when we were doing introductions or when I did the introduction for myself, but your beliefs affect your mindset around your life and business. Your mindset is a set of attitudes that you establish based on your beliefs. Your mind is basically, without getting you know, too scientific or too geeky, your mind is your consciousness. It's that deep, soulful part of you. And you develop that spiritual part of you in your mind. Like that's where it all begins. Your mind can change the physical reality of your brain to reflect your choices. And your mind chooses to live in peace or turmoil, shame or gratitude, or chaos and certainty. And your mind can change your brain and the thoughts that it creates, which is pretty powerful. Your belief system, what you believe about yourself, your gifts and talents, your abilities about other people, about God or what he can do in your life, all influence your mind and the choices that you make. God has given us free will and the right to choose. You get to choose to have negative thoughts or positive thoughts. And Betsy, because you're in positive psychology, you're going to like especially resonate with all of this. And you may even know more than I do, but it's hopefully it all just resonates. Um, but something that is super cool, and this is something that I just really, really love, is that if you are experiencing doubt or disbelief, you don't have to stay stuck. You can change your beliefs and therefore your thoughts. And when you change your beliefs and thoughts, then you're going to be able to change your emotions and feelings, which in turn are going to change your behaviors and actions, therefore your outcomes or your results. So you have gifts, you have talents, and you have the, the, the most important gift that you have, I think, is that ability to choose, to change your thoughts. And your thoughts are going to produce your results. So that's why it's so important to be able to recognize the fact that you can change them. There is hope if you've been stuck in that vicious cycle of negative anxious thoughts, there's hope for you that you can change those thoughts and then move forward to either create a new life for yourself or just transition those thoughts so that you have more positive outcomes. Every part of your journey, and this is something that I love to emphasize with entrepreneurs, especially people like new or who are just trying to build their online presence is that Every part of your journey has influenced what you believe about yourself 
the thoughts that you have about yourself and what you do and your unique gifts that you've been given. You can change your brain with your mind. Therefore, you renew your mindset. This is, and I'm not sure if everybody here is faith-based or not, but I, I am a Christian and I do have a lot of faith foundation in my business. And one of my favorite verses is Romans 12 too. And I'm going to read that because I, I'm hoping it'll resonate with you as much as it does for me around belief. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. But the key to this verse for me is that renewing of my mind, that the world can be transformed, right? And we can do that. But when we look at what the world tells us, and this is going to all come full circle, that you know, when we look at what the world tells us that we have to be on social media or we have to follow the experts and do what they're doing in order to achieve success, it convolutes things in our own mind. And so this verse to me says that mm -mm, I don't have to listen to any of that. My mind can help me navigate what I'm going to do. So think of it like this. You may not be able to control the circumstances of your life, but what you can control are your thoughts and your reactions to any given situation, no matter if it's good or bad. So let's dive deeper into how your mindset is keeping you from growing. We all have those beliefs, right? The beliefs that may be based on your faith. They may be based on just whatever you believe about yourself from past experiences, maybe traumas in your life or any other experiences, what you believe about your business, what you believe about others or what you've been taught to believe. And sometimes what we've been taught to believe is the greatest thing that holds us back. Your belief system is at the core of you. And it's it is it's influenced by, you know, like I said, those past experiences and your entire life journey. When we look at our entire life journey, we have all of these gifts, right? Experiences that we've had, and all of that comes together to influence our beliefs and our thoughts. But your, your belief system is, is to me, it, the best way I can describe it for me is that it's like who you are at the core. It's your spirit. It's your mind. It's all of those things collectively. And that influences the thoughts that you have going through your brain. So I want you to think about a situation that you recently experienced. And you can write this down. The situation itself is neither good nor bad, but what are your thoughts around that situation? It could be something that happened this weekend. When you write down those thoughts that you had around that situation, how do those thoughts, what emotions do those thoughts trigger? How do those thoughts make you feel? What emotions do those thoughts invoke? And as a result of the emotions, what behaviors did you fall into? Now, these could be good or bad. It doesn't matter. I just want you to see that, have that in your mind as we go through this example that I'm going to share. So let's say that you decide you want to start running. You're ready to get in better shape and running's the easiest thing because you can do it anywhere, it's free and you can just go for it. So to motivate yourself, you register for a 5K. But you've never been an athlete. You were never on a team, you never felt sportsy. And as a result, you believe this is gonna be near impossible. You start to think about how hard it's going to be. What if you can't do it? What if you get hurt? What if people make fun of you when you don't have a good enough time? These thoughts are going to invoke negative emotions and feelings. And those will include things like being fearful, being doubtful, being reluctant to, to even start training, being reluctant to maybe buy the new sneakers you need to run. It will cause you to feel anxious, maybe unworthy of even attempting it, maybe sad, and maybe you'll even have physical symptoms that could keep you from 
going out and running, like a stomach ache or a headache. Those negative emotions are going to trigger negative feelings. Both are going to influence your behaviors and actions. So in this scenario, you may not buy the running shoes you need. You may cancel the registration from the race. You may not start training. The outcome will be that, number one, you can't go to the race, you can't run the race, or you get injured because you haven't trained appropriately, or you're sitting on the couch binging on Netflix instead of training. So let's see what happens if we flip that switch in our brain. The situation is the same. You want to start running. Now, this example is not business specific, but it's something simple that we can all relate to, to then translate over into our businesses. But now your thoughts are coming from a place of belief that you are capable of running a 5K. Your thoughts are, I'm ready to train. I have everything I need to do this right. I have a training app on my phone. I've got the new shoes that I need to run so that I'm going to have support. My family is supporting me. They're cheering me on. And it's possible. Even if I don't run the entire 5K and I walk part of it, I will still cross the finish line. Now you feel confident. You feel certain that you can do it. You're excited. You're ready to begin the journey. You're happy. You're eager. And you're already successful. So your behaviors are going to reflect those emotions and feelings. You're going to show up. You're going to train with a positive attitude, positive energy, with clarity and confidence and calm around your goal and your ability. And guess what? The outcome is going to be you're not sitting on the couch watching Netflix. You are crossing the finish line. Can you see how powerful those thoughts around the situation shift can become? It's remarkable. But I like to refer to this as mind modeling. And you have your beliefs. Then a situation arises. You have your thoughts about the situation, which are going to trigger the emotions and feelings that you experience which are then going to influence your behaviors and actions. And ultimately those are gonna determine your outcomes and your results. So what can you do if you have these negative thoughts that are bringing you down? If your beliefs aren't positive and your thoughts are negative, what, what can you do? So when I talk about mind modeling, to me, it's, it's not this thing that you do once and change your thoughts for one day. This is something that is a lifelong every single day activity. And it's, it's daily action for your mind, just like exercise is daily action for your body. There are many things that you can do to influence your mindset. And I'm going to go through just a quick list. And then I want to focus on one thing that can help you with everything related to life and business as you navigate any new experiences, especially when we talk about starting and growing a business without social media. Um, so one thing that you can do for, or here's the list of things you can do for, um, hold on just a second. I'm going to see. Um, okay. I think everyone's muted. Sorry about that. Um, so I, here are the, here's a list of things that you can do. Number one, you can align with your values and Betsy, when we were doing introductions, you made the comment that social media just feels terrible to you. That those are your values saying, this isn't a good fit for me. This isn't aligned with where I want to be in my life or my business. And therefore you're going to, it's not going to feel right, right? If you're not aligned with your values, the more aligned we are with our values, the more we're going to make positive decisions for our business. Um, exercise is key for our mind. Movement is medicine for our mind. For me, prayer, faith, scripture, those have always been a, a mainstay for me to be able to stay strong, to be able to navigate what's going on in my, in my brain. But one of the verses that I love so much is uh, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. That's just one that I have on repeat in my brain when I'm facing some challenges or obstacles. Um, eat healthy, organic, whole foods, hire a coach, meditate, breathe, hire a therapist, practice gratitude. And then the last one that I focus heavily on is journaling. We know that journal, journaling is as powerful as meditation to change the neural pathways in our brain. When you start your day and get all those negative thoughts on paper and change them to the positive, 
you reset your mind and your brain and you reset how your day is going to go. So I, the way I journal and no one has to do this, but it is very effective and it's based on cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a psychological technique that works scientifically has been proven, but the five C's are catch, challenge, change, control, and confidence. So when you think about those negative thoughts or negative beliefs that you're experiencing, if you can catch them and challenge them, and by challenge, I mean, are they realistic? Are they rational? Would someone that you know, love, and respect be thinking these same things or believing these same things about you and your gifts and your journey? If the answer to those questions is no, it's time to change those thoughts. So to change those thoughts, write down the positive, go through the model of your belief, write it down. What are the thoughts that are being triggered? What are the emotions and feelings being triggered? What are the actions, behaviors that are being then triggered as a result of those? And what are the anticipated results if those thoughts and things are negative? Then flip that switch to positive. And when you flip that switch to positive, when you write that down, your brain is going to transition, transform into those positive thoughts, positive actions that are going to be the result of that change. So that's that's my method and it works. And I would just want to share that the more you do this exercise, the more control you're going to have over those thoughts. You're going to think positive thoughts more than you're going to think negative thoughts. It takes time though. It takes action. And then once you have done that, then you can have more confidence. The more confidence you have in yourself, the more confidence your audience is going to have and the more trust they're going to have. The more confidence you have in yourself, the more you're going to trust yourself in the decisions you make in your business and the more in the actions that you take. The more comp and then the more confidence you have, the more you trust yourself, which all of that relates over to your audience and how you present yourself to them and then what they believe about you. Allison asked me to repeat the five C's. They are catch, challenge, change, control, and confidence. The one thing that I want to emphasize is that when we are confused, and maybe it's from our beliefs, but when we are confused in our business, confusion breeds confusion. So if we're confused, our audience is going to be confused. And so our beliefs are so important for having clarity in our business, the clarity around who we are, what we do, who we serve, what gifts we have, what our journey has been, what differentiates us from everyone else in our space. So all of those beliefs empower you to have more clarity. And when you have more clarity, obviously that's what, you know, again, where that confidence comes into play. All right. So we know that trust determines buying practices. So the more you trust yourself, the more your audience trusts you, the more likely you're going to be able to convert your audience to paying clients because they trust you. They believe in you. So as I shared, the mind modeling exercise works wonders for changing your thoughts in all mindset barriers, scenario, mindset barrier scenarios, including money mindset, um, anything that's keeping you stuck, any negative thoughts that are keeping you drugged down. Now, as an entrepreneurs, and here's where we really dive deep into the, the nitty gritty of, of the purpose of this workshop, is that as entrepreneurs, the added challenges of the online space can really bring us down. Comparison, imposter syndrome, and doubt resulting from just consuming too much content. And when we're new to entrepreneurship, what happens? We consume content. We're doing research. We follow people that we think we can learn from. And society has told you that you must be on social media in order to start and grow a business. If you want to be successful, you have to have an online presence. And I used to believe this, as I said before in the introductions, until I made some decisions to, to change. And I discovered that I really don't need to be on Instagram 24 seven, like I was. I was letting it consume me instead of me controlling where I was spending my time and how I was managing my business. So I'm not gonna say that social media isn't advantageous. It is, of course, because that's how you can build relationships. Allison, I wouldn't know you if it weren't for social media. Majette, I wouldn't know you if it weren't for social media. But the key is to use social media in a way that does just that. Build relationships. Don't tie yourself to it. 
Number one, I call it the compar ultimate comparison trap. The more time you spend on it, the more likely you are to fall into that place of doubt, to lack belief in yourself because you're seeing other people doing something similar to you and maybe they're doing it better, but you have no proof they're doing it better. It only looks like they're doing it better online. The grass is never greener on the other side of the fence, but on social media, it looks like it is. And because it looks like it is, we tend to believe that whatever they're doing is what we need to do too. But oftentimes that doesn't align with our values. And if that doesn't align with our values, we're not going, it's not going to work within our businesses. So, you know, when we look back at the mind modeling, we can look at social media as that situation, right? The experience, and we can map out the model based on that. So if it's, if when you get off of social media, you have negative thoughts and emotions, you're feeling drugged down, you're feeling sluggish because it's just taken all the energy out of you, that's not the right place for you. And that's what I discovered was that I was in that rut of comparison and comparative thoughts because of social media and what I was seeing and thinking, well, I, they're already doing this, so how am I going to be successful? Or they're saying I have to do this, so I'm going to invest in that when that wasn't a good fit for me. And I see this all the time. So, and oftentimes what happens is instead of building a foundation for your business first, people dive into social media and they think that's going to be the cure-all for their business because they're going to make connections. And those people are all going to just flood into their, their business and hire them. And so they don't build the foundation first. But if you don't build the foundation, you have a solid personal brand. If you don't have a brand marketing strategy and you're only using social media to market yourself, you're setting yourself up for failure. We know that 20% of businesses fail within the first one year, first year of business, 50% fail within the first five years. So if you think of those statistics, the reason those aren't, those aren't thriving businesses is because they haven't laid the foundation first. Social media could go away tomorrow. So not only is it the ultimate comparison trap, but it could go away tomorrow or your account could be hacked. What This happened to one of my recent clients and she literally lost all her followers. She lost all of the valuable content that she had produced already and she had to start over. She couldn't even copy and paste that content into blog posts. She lost her account. To me, that's terrifying. I want to have my business on a solid foundation so that whatever I'm putting out into the world is I have control of it, right? And I can always stay connected with the people that I care about. So I want you to remember when you fall into that trap of comparison, just remember that there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you today. There's never been anyone else like you in the past, and there will never be anyone else like you in the future because you have a set of gifts that are unique to you. And you've had a journey and experiences throughout your life, whether you've made mistakes or felt like you failed, you've had opportunities to learn from them. And that has all brought you right to where you are today to be able to share your gifts with other people. So don't let that online space alter your beliefs in yourself because you are way too worthy to let other people's influences cause you to not believe in yourself. So, okay, let's talk about now, as you set out to grow, to start and grow your business, how it's key to employ this mind modeling method, right? But let's also talk about four strategies that you can use to grow your business without relying on social media. Now, I'm only touching on four things today. I actually, because of time, I actually have 10 total things that I suggest, but we're going to touch on four. And if we have time, I'll throw in a few extra. But first and foremost, it's important to note that these are things that I recommend. And these are things that are proven. Like these are things that when you learn about these things, they truly benefit you. They truly benefit your business. All right. So the first one we're going to talk about is your website. What you own is your website. And your website should be the cornerstone of your business. Your personal brand and your brand marketing strategies are the foundation of your business. And then you add your website in as the 
core place to demonstrate what differentiates you from all others in your area of expertise. And that differentiation comes from, like I said before, all of your experiences, everything along your journey, positive and negative. Use your website as an introduction to you, to an introduction of you to it. Well, okay, let me rephrase that. Use your, use your website as an introduction of you and your business to the world. Create copy that converts by showing visitors that number one, you understand their pain points and how your journey has led you to be able to help them. We hear a lot about the story brand. Well, what does the story brand mean? It basically what the story brand philosophy is, is that you tell people that you understand their pain points and you let them be the hero of the journey. You explain to them how you are going to be their guide to ultimately become the hero of their own journey, which is different than saying, I'm your hero and I'm going to get you results. So it's it's important to recognize that when you and and I like the story brand method. However, since every single aspect of your business or your life has has come into play with where you are in your business now and your ability to help other people, that has to be shared because we have to differentiate ourselves. So if you have if you have had experiences, so um you know, if you've had it, if, if you're being becoming a life coach and you've had experiences in life that were traumatic or were um, challenging, you know, all of those things come into play with how you can now help other people. You can see what they're struggling with better than they can see what they're struggling with because you've had the experience yourself and you have an outside perspective. You're unbiased. So all of those things are really important and they're part of your story, but how can you connect that story to the other people, the other person who is seeking your help or needs your help? How can you connect your experiences to them to explain that I understand you, I get you, and here's how I can guide you to the solution that you need? So that's, that's your website copy. The, the second strategy is to have a blog on your website. You may hear people say blogging is dead. Blogging is not dead. It's the most powerful thing that you can do to get traffic to your website. Google is a search engine. And when you blog with search engine, op with search engine optimization, so if your blogs are optimized for SEO, you're more likely to be found by search engines. And let's just use Google as an example. When you think of Google, you know, we hear people say the World Wide Web, and that's that's www, right? That's where that comes from. But when you think about what that is, it is like a web. And Google and other search engines have crawlers. So think of a spider. So if someone goes into Google and they say, I want to learn about content creation, they're going to type in that question. Maybe it's um, how to content creation. Google is going to send out their little crawlers, their spiders all over the web. And they're going to look for that phrase, first of all. Then they're going to go deeper and they're going to see, okay, this person puts content on their website once or twice a week. This person has backlinks to other articles that provide additional value. This person has... Um, let's see, I, I like trying to think of more examples, but you get the gist. The D Google's going to go very deep to see if you're the person that they should be recommending. And this is how you grow your ranking. So the more blog posts you put up with search engine optimization, and you think of keywords, key phrases, the more you do that, the more likely Google is to number one, find you and number two, recommend you to whoever it is that is putting in that search item to begin with. Your blog will also become your cornerstone content piece. And what does that mean? That means that you write that blog post and then you can take that content in the blog post and share it everywhere else. But you put it there first because that's never going to go away. You own that platform and it's going to stay right where it is. 
You can share the blog post content to other platforms, including social media, if you want to, but it's housed someplace safe. It's not going on a place that could go away tomorrow. And more specifically, you can actually use the blog post content on Pinterest. And Pinterest is going to drive that traffic back to your website. Now, the key for all of this is your blog post should have a call to action. And what your call to action is, is going to be key for your overarching marketing efforts. So the other thing, the fourth thing is going to be email marketing. So when we talk about email marketing, we need a way to grow that email list. You already have a community that knows you and trusts you. So especially if you're just starting out and you haven't really created a brand marketing strategy, your email marketing efforts should be priority after your website and blogging. Because when you communicate with your community and you tell them, hey, I have this business and I'm doing X, Y, Z, invite them into your world, invite them into your community because then they're going to be <clears throat> invested in you because they already trust you. So now they know what you're doing and they're more likely to refer people to you. You have to give them an opt-out. If they don't want to stay on the journey with you, that's fine. They can then subscribe from your email list. But the key is to invite all of those people in because even if you don't think they're going to buy from you and maybe they won't buy from you, at least not right now, but tomorrow they could have a conversation with someone who says, oh, I'm looking for someone who can help me create content because I just don't have time to do it myself. And they're going to say, oh my gosh, Allison just sent me this email. That's exactly what she's doing. You need to connect with her. So that's just one example, but it could be, there could be so many more than that, right? But your blog posts are going to have a call to action to be able to get more people on your email list. You start with your community and then you build from there. So that call to action could be something like download my free ebook. It could be subscribe to my email list for more. And then you can also take that blog, that blog content and you can share that to your email list. So you're constantly nurturing that email list with the content. You're repurposing that content from your blog post and sharing it with your email list. And then it becomes this cycle. The more people that click from your email list to your blog post, the more likely they are to refer your blog post to someone else when they have a conversation and someone else needs it. So you can see how it's this beautiful cycle of opportunity for referrals and for growth for you and for your business. Those are four strategies. And I kept this to four strategies today because I want to talk about my Purpose to Results Academy, which is launching today. And I am like crazy excited about it. So in the Academy, we're actually going to be talking more about all of these things, right? All of these strategies that you can use to build your business without social media. And I'm going to give you um, the breakout, the, the, the details of the program, because within the details of the program, you'll see additional things that you can do to market yourself from social without relying on social media so heavily. Um, I'm just pulling up some notes real quick because I don't want to forget any of the details. But um, the Academy is for faith-centered women who want to start and grow a business, an impact-driven business with simplicity that helps and influences the lives of others in a positive way without relying on social media. So each week during the group coaching sessions, we'll address beliefs and mindset every single time. I'm actually going to be providing scripture verses every week that you can use as a reflection. Um, if you want to, you don't have to, but there will be those to help you reflect and grow your beliefs in yourself and your purpose and your abilities and your gifts. And then each week I'll teach on a specific item that will help you grow your business with simplicity, ease, and grace. The list of things that we're going to do inside the Academy is we'll talk about clarity and we'll talk about the purpose formula and how you can discover your purpose if you're feeling any confusion around what your purpose is or what you're being called to do. 
And sometimes it's, it, you may know exactly what it is that you want to do or that you feel like you're being called to do, but there's a confusion around how you can communicate that and, or how you can become more visible through your personal brand and then who your ideal clients are. So we will have activities for each one of those inside the Academy. And you'll have a workbook that, where you can actually document all of this stuff and do these exercises. So it's all in one place, easily referred to later on. But my goal is to give you these exercises to move you from doubt to clarity. And sometimes we don't even realize that there's doubt that's holding us back. We don't realize it's our belief system that's holding us back. Maybe we think we just don't know the next right step, but there's a reason we aren't finding that next right step. There's a reason that we feel stuck. And most of the time that all revolves around the beliefs or lack of clarity. So we're going to have business tips. So for people starting out, some a lot of the questions I get when I start working with people that maybe they're starting a side, side hustle because they're still working in corporate, or maybe they're just new to entrepreneurship. Maybe they've started their business, but they're not experiencing the growth. There are a lot of business um, philosophies, tips, things that people don't know straight away. Like, do they need an LLC? What about sales tax? What about um, insurance? All of those kind of things. We'll talk a little bit about those things. And then we'll talk about tech systems, processes, things that you can use to automate your business, things that can make your business more simplified. And we'll talk about um, your offers and your pricing. We'll also talk about website content, and I'll actually have my eyes on your website to review it to make sure that your copy does make sense, that your messaging is clear, and that you have SEO there so that you can be found and discovered by Google and other search engines. I'm going to teach you how to blog for search engine optimization. We're going to dive into overarching content creation, such as email marketing and Pinterest marketing. We're going to talk about marketing basics. We're going to also talk about sales strategies so that you can get on sales calls and convert. And we're going to talk about public relations. And within public relations, we'll talk about podcasting, being a podcast guest. And I will tell you that podcasting is one of the key ways for growing your business without social media. Not just having a podcast, but being a podcast guest on other people's shows and how you can do that effectively. And I'm going to have two guest speakers. There's one week where I'm actually going to be away. So we're going to have two guest speakers that week. One will be on copywriting and the other one will be on designing branded graphics in Canva. And we're going to have coaching hot seats. And this is the part that I absolutely love. This is something I do with my coach and my mastermind. And it just gives you an opportunity to have to ask specific questions and then to learn how to navigate whatever it is that's giving you a challenge. And you get to learn from everybody else's hot seat at the same time. And other people will learn from your hot seat. I think the word hot seat kind of sounds intimidating, but I don't know what other word to use for that, but you do get that individual time within the group scenario. Um, so if you are looking for growth and transformation because you're tired of feeling stuck or challenged, you're tired of being told you have to do X, Y, Z, and it's not working for you. You're tired of overthinking. This program is for you. The logistics are that we will meet every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time for 90 minutes. The first part of each session will be me teaching and guiding you and giving you tools and tips and things like that. And then the last part of the session will be for questions and answers around the topic that we discussed. Each week, like I said before, you'll receive a scripture verse to reflect on if you want to, but it's obviously that is your choice. Um, but I, my goal is to help you increase your beliefs around yourself and your business. There's an upgrade option for a one-to-one -one private session with me. And it's discounted deeply at 30% off the normal rate for anyone who is a student in the academy. And before we close out and I open the floor to questions um, on anything that we've talked about today throughout the masterclass, I just want to share this testimony with you. And this is from my client, Andrea, who she is a life coach. She's an author and she's a speaker. 
And she left corporate last year and has really struggled to get clients and build her business. And she hired me for a VIP day. And here's what she said about that VIP experience. Robin has a unique perspective that can help you brand yourself and your business. In just four hours, she was able to help me create a brand strategy designed to increase my executive presence, attract the right clients, and grow my business. I highly recommend her services to anyone looking to grow their business, develop a proven brand strategy, and increase revenue. Thanks to Robin, I now have a clearer vision of my business and am on my way to achieving greater success than I have in years. Robin is a coach like no other. Now, I want to emphasize that the VIP day didn't just change her beliefs about her business and her unique gifts, but when I looked at her offerings and I revised her offerings for her, we worked together around to really evaluate her pricing and what her offerings were. We increased her opportunity for revenue to 30K in the first two months of this year. Now, that amount may seem like a little to you or it may seem like a lot to you, but the key to that is when you transform, when you experience transformation around your beliefs and you have another perspective on your business, because if you have a belief system that is telling you that you should charge $150 for a four-hour time period with your client, you are only limiting yourself. And you're limiting the other, what the other person is going to get from you. Because when you limit yourself, you are not showing up with as much positive energy and focus, and you're not providing the amount of value that the person needs because ultimately you're frustrated. And if you don't believe that you're providing immense value and you're only charging that much, then you're not going to show up and provide the value that you really have the capability of providing. So abundance will follow when you have this transformation and you don't have to do it using social media. You can do it using these other tools. And I want to emphasize that when Andrea purchased the four-hour VIP day, that's a $2,500 package. So imagine the results that you can achieve in 10 weeks, which is a total of 15 hours plus daily access to me through the group Facebook group and boxer access to me every Monday from nine to five for only $19.97. This is an introductory rate and this program will never be this price point again because of the immense value. The other bonus of the program is that I'm only taking 20 students. I want this to be a small environment because I want to give you the attention that you deserve. So we're going to have the community forum, which will be in the Facebook group, where you'll have opportunities after each session, session to ask questions. If you do homework in between time, then you'll also have the opportunity to show me that homework or to share that in the group. Being able to be in that community is also an opportunity to increase your referral sources. You get the opportunity to build relationships and trust with the other people that are like-minded in the program. So how does that sound? Are you curious about the program? Would you like more information about the program? I'm gonna put in the comments in the chat, I'll put in the comments um, the link to number one, the website sales page, and I'll also put the link to my calendar. So if you wanna book a discovery call, you can book a discovery call and I can give you more more details, or we can just see if the program is the right fit for you, the best option for you and your business and where you are today. So now that I have told you all about that, we have about six minutes left, but I am perfectly willing to stay until after two o'clock. So if you have questions, comments, want to know anything else about um my strategies and what I do. Oh, Allison, good question. The Academy starts February 2nd. So it goes February 2nd to, I think the last date is April 10th because we have a week off. Week nine will be a week off for students to catch up. 
to review all of the sessions, any notes they've taken, review their workbook, and then come to week 10 for hot seat questions and answers. Yeah, so it, it we actually go a, a full, we have that week off, so we actually go an extra week at the end. <laughs>